Yeah. Today I see his real name, Muhammad Sim. So, uh, first of all, let me thank you for the, the kind of uh, prayer that has been given. Uh, and thank you also for the words of welcome from uh, the ministry. I know it is a, a worthy occasion to be here to celebrate uh, the handing over of a machine that will be very helpful not only in uh, police farm but also in the community uh, around uh, Weiwei. And I know the the uh, the farmer that we are here with, uh, uh, Polly, has uh, never received uh, any assistance from uh, from government, except for some fencing material, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But today, government is uh, is happy to offer this assistance in the form of uh, excavate, which. Uh, I know will go a long way in uh, increasing uh, production from uh, police farm and also from the surrounding farms uh, in this area. There is a, a verse in, in the Bible which is God first helps those who help themselves. Uh, Poly is a fine example of uh, Someone who first helps himself, and then God will provide the, the other blessing. And I, I see today that uh, verse has come to life. Uh, government has come in the in the form of the assistance of, of the uh, excavator, but. Because government recognizes the contribution that has been made by Poli, not only to to his community but to the national economy, which is a uh, big, you know. Poli, I think, is now uh, the, the largest pineapple producer in Fiji. So congratulations, uh, Poli. But what uh, whatever it is, you know, an increase in production will be good for agriculture in Fiji and good for Fiji's economy. Okay. In fact, I had talked with uh, Polly on the possibility of uh, putting in place a pineapple processing plant somewhere here, but. Uh, Polly be, being a very honest uh, person, he told me, no, Minister, uh, we don't have enough pineapple to, to have a pineapple processing plant. And then I went back and I thought about it and I said, oh, that is a very honest opinion. And uh, with this machine, you know, it's going to improve, uh, one, the roading infrastructure within uh, his farm and other farms that will need uh, uh, some roading works, drainage, which will increase uh, pineapple production in this area. And I think if we can uh, at least double the pineapple production from here, then the next thing coming is the pineapple processing plant. Okay? But uh, we'll see how it goes. You know, the owners is on uh, you farmers. Uh, it will have to come from you. Okay? Like uh, when I asked Polly in his owner's opinion, he said, "No, no, we don't have. Currently, we don't have enough pineapples." And. Uh, I believe that uh, that is a very honest opinion. But this is what we want. Government 
through the Ministry of Agriculture wants to work closely with you. And we want to listen to you. It's not what we as the ministry or government wants. You know, it should be coming from the bottom up. Okay? Because you are actually the farmers who are sweating it out in the field every day. You know, and I must uh, first, I must uh, congratulate all farmers who are here for your effort. Because you are the ones who are feeding Fiji. You are the ones who are keeping Fiji alive. If it was not for the farmers, we will not be here. Right? You are the ones who make sure there are three meals on the table every day. The farmers of Fiji. You are the life of Fiji. And that's why I love being in uh, the agriculture sector. I love being in the agriculture ministry. And I love to sit with farmers and listen to what you have to say. Because in, in my mind, the farmers of Fiji are the most honest people. Okay? Some of you might not believe it, but that's up to you. But for me, I think the farmers of Fiji are the most genuine. You know, because you sweat it out every day. Okay? While you are toiling in the sunlight, that is real work. Okay? When you are harvesting, that is real work. When you take your products to the market, that is real work. Okay? And when you see people having three meals a day, that is the result of your work. Okay? Unless people eat well, then the economy will grow. <coughs> First of all, we had to feed ourselves. You know? When you have a healthy nation that eats well, then you can start thinking about growing the economy. If the people are hungry, forget about growing the economy. Okay? Because the only thing people will do when they're hungry is they'll start stealing. Okay? But when you have a people who are fed well, then you can start thinking about growing the economy. So congratulations once again to all farmers uh, this morning. I congratulate you, Paulie, yeah. for for a job well done. Okay. And uh, with those words, I thank you once again. Thank you. My name is Mohammed Sahim. I'm staying in Waiwai. My age is 40, 52. And I'm being started my farm when I was 18 years old. Now is nearly uh, 33 years to planting this pineapple farming. Now I'm utilizing, I got nearly 400 acres of land and utilizing for the pineapple is nearly 160 acres of pineapple is going on. Well, whether the thing is uh, harvesting and some more small planted, all in all stages, eh? I got it. This is the least land, this is the least land, but I, my friendship with the Matangali is very nice. That's the main thing, eh? If you're gonna stay in Fiji, you have to do the relationship with the Matangali, eh? So it will be better for me. I, I got the Ripley Queen one. And it's a smooth cane I planted before, but now the smooth cane is uh, very hard to get the market. But the Ripley Queen is very nice for the market. And also you control the thing, how to harvest, eh? Very, nearly I got 10 acres and my three sons here with me and all they working here. I, my market is in, oh, in Suva market. Before I was a uh, hotel supplying, so the middleman, but uh, before COVID one year I was supplying in Suva market because in season time they don't buy from me. They buy from where they got the less money from. Eh? So that's why I just put the market from supermarket, one fella there, Jermay and Donu, and all of my pineapple neighbor, four or five uh, truck, three ton truck, he buys all per week. Sometimes uh, 
every day one truck of pineapple. Now his off season he is taking two trucks of pineapple. Hundred dozen maybe cost twelve dollar, sometimes fifteen dollar, and the yeah the season and off season also. No, now I got to buy in the market, but the price is same now. Yeah, also also I got a cattle farming. I got a cattle farming. My son, one son, he got the sheep farming, and one the other one he got a what do you call the beef farming, beef farming. Hey, I'm very happy with this government. So they give me a grant for this uh, what do you call excavator. So before I got plenty land, they, before government they promised me, but they haven't couldn't do anything. But this government came in six weeks. They gave me the offer for the uh, excavator, and I paid the thing. And the machine was not there in the general machine. Day. So that I uh, get to get another after six weeks, then I get the machine. And I'm very happy with this government. And I promise I'm gonna do the work with this government. And also I can uh, supply the farmers if they were interested in pineapple farming. I can supply them the material, everything. So oh, very nice minister, man. The father came me. The father told me, I I know you before, Polly. My nickname is Polly, eh? And the father said me, Polly, I know you before. So I was very happy. Yeah, very very happy. I'm very happy today, man. I want to tell all the farmers like me, just utilize all the farmers, the land, utilize the land. Even my land here and the other side, I got the cattle there, all the utilize are the thing. Then you can get the money from here. Because people think they go overseas, they work their hard for 10 hours, 8 hours. But in farm, they, they work only for 5 hours. And there, there they just get a little bit of money. If we work hard, we're going to get money.